Spider-Man is amazing. He has starred in eight animated series. Two live action TV shows and five feature films. You may have also heard that he has had his own comic book for the last 60 years or so. In that time, he has gone through a lot. From high school drama, to married life, betrayal, death, triumph, and controversy. This is the story of the amazing Spider-Man. Spider-Man first appeared in issue 15 of Amazing Fantasy Volume 1, an anthology series featuring several short stories each month. Spider-Man's origin is one of the most famous even outside of hardcore comic readers. All of the best known elements appear in his debut. Radioactive spider that gives him powers, Aunt May, Uncle Ben's murder by a robber that Peter had not bothered to stop, and the motto, with great power comes great responsibility. Spider-Man was so popular with his readers that he was given his own monthly comic book, The Amazing Spider-Man, the following year. Peter Parker was a new kind of hero the first teenage superhero who was not a sidekick. He attended high school, he worked a job to help his family with rent, and he dealt with bullies, with and without superpowers. Readers could relate to Peter. As time went on, Peter dated several women, most notably Gwen Stacy, Felicia Hardy, and Mary Jane Watson, whom he would later marry. By the 1980s, Peter has grown into an adult, married man no longer in school or college. Many of Spider-Man's most recognizable villains show up in the first few years of his comic. Also, several who didn't really catch on. Spider-Man's rogues gallery rivals Batman's for best known. Spider-Man's villains tend to be very personal, attacking Peter's friends and family. In one early story, Captain Stacy, mentor to Spider-Man and father to Peter's girlfriend, Gwen Stacy, is killed during a conflict between Spider-Man and Dr. Octopus. As he dies, he tells Spider-Man, take care of Gwen, Peter. Peter had not known that Captain Stacy knew his civilian identity. Spider-Man's identity is really only secret-ish. In How Green Was My Goblin, infamous villain, the Green Goblin, discovers that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. He takes him hostage and reveals that he is Norman Osborn, mentor to Peter and father of his best friend, Harry Osborn. This landmark issue set the stage for one of the most important events in Spider-Man's history. The Night Gwen Stacy Died in which the Green Goblin abducts Gwen Stacy, takes her to a bridge, and throws her off. Spider-Man shoots a web to catch her, but she is dead when he pulls her up. The Green Goblin tells Spider-Man that the shock of falling from a great height was enough to kill her, but the presence of a snap sound effect on the original panel has led many to speculate that sudden stop caused by Spider-Man's rescue broke her neck. This adds to his burden of guilt, since he knows that he may have killed her himself. The Green Goblin seemingly dies, impaled on his own glider in the aftermath. Later, Harry Osborn is revealed to have witnessed this, and he becomes a new Green Goblin to take revenge on Spider-Man. It was not the last time Spider-Man would lose his privacy. One of the biggest stories in the 80s is Kraven's Last Hunt in which Kraven hunts, kills, and buries Spider-Man. Kraven then takes over the Spider-Man persona and becomes a brutal vigilante. Kraven, satisfied he has made his point, retires the hunt and commits suicide. Spider-Man resumes his spider manery. Spider-Man's look changed enormously in the 80s when he donned a new black and white costume on an alien planet. 
don't ask, which he uses for several years after. Later, Spider-Man discovers that his black costume is alive, self-aware, and beginning to control him. He removes the costume using sound waves. It escapes and joins the rival reporter, Eddie. The costume retains Peter's memories, giving Eddie Brock detailed knowledge about Spider-Man's life, as well as similar powers as supervillain Venom. Venom proved to be very popular with readers. In 1992, the Venom symbiote spawned a second living suit, which bonded with Eddie Brock's psychopathic prison cellmate, creating a new villain, Carnage. What's wrong? Cassidy is gone. There is only Carnage! Carnage would be the villain in the story Maximum Carnage which featured a war between Spider-Man's villains and a team of superheroes with the civilians of New York caught between. In 2013, a terminally ill Dr. Octopus, determined to cheat death, creates a device that lets him swap bodies with Peter Parker. Peter seemingly dies when Dr. Octopus's body does. Dr. Octopus, now in Spider-Man's body, resolves that he'll be a better Spider-Man. The new Superior Spider-Man was much more brutal even to the point of executing criminals himself. Dr. Octopus remained in Peter's body for a year, battling the remnants of Peter's consciousness before coming to the realization that Peter was a better man than he was. So why does Spider-Man stay so popular after all this time? Is it all the weird and diverse villains? Probably not, but they help. Spider-Man is so popular because even though bad things happen to him, he remains a light-hearted, nice guy at his core, always ready with a smart alecky zinger, or a clever solution to the difficult problem. In an era when so many superheroes are brooding, angry people... Peter Parker is a character who loves what he does and does it with a laugh.